Hey there, Louis here. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how you can add email notifications to a SharePoint online list. Now specifically, I will demonstrate how you can create a workflow in Microsoft Power Automate that will send emails to users whenever a new item is added to your SharePoint list or whenever an existing item is updated. Now we'll also look at how you can incorporate conditions into the workflow so that those email notifications only fire when certain conditions are met. Now let's go ahead and let's dive in. All right, now you can see here that I have a SharePoint online list called Project Task Tracker. Now this list is being used to track project task assignments. Now we are going to create a workflow that sends an email to the task owner whenever they are assigned a new task. And we're also going to create a workflow that sends an email to the task owner and contributor once a task is completed. All right, now the first thing that we need to do is navigate to Microsoft Power Automate. From the landing page, you want to click on the Create button. And next, you want to select Automated Cloud Flow. Now, automated cloud flows trigger based on an event taking place. Now, we'll add our trigger in a second, but before we do that, you want to go ahead and give your flow a name. Next, you want to place your cursor in the search box and you want to search for when an item is, and we are going to select the trigger when an item is created or modified. So I'll go ahead and select this and I will click create. And you can see here that our trigger has been added. Now, an important note about this trigger, this trigger will execute this workflow whenever a new item is added to your SharePoint list or when an existing item is updated. Now, the next step is to add the address for your SharePoint online site. Now, I'll just quickly flip back to my SharePoint site and I will select everything up to and before the lists word here. So this is the SharePoint online site that hosts this list. I'll click back into Power Automate and I will paste that value in here. Now you can see here that once I paste the value in, it is also going to display that in the list of available sites. You wanna go ahead and select it. And then the next step is to select the name of the list that you would like to feature in this workflow. Now I'll go ahead and select my project task tracker list. And we've now added our trigger to this workflow. The next step is to click on the new step button. And what we're going to do here is we are going to search for the action that is called switch. And we are going to select this switch control. Now a switch control in Power Automate allows you to program your workflow to execute different actions depending on different conditions. Now in this workflow, we are going to switch on our status column, which means depending on what state an item is in, we are going to send one of two email notifications. If an item is in backlog status, then we are going to send a task assigned email. And if an item is in a completed state, then we are going to send a task completed email. Now, the first thing that you need to do with your switch action is you need to select which value or field we are going to be switching on. Now, if I place my cursor in this choose a value box, you will see here that this dynamic content box appears on the screen. Now, dynamic content allows us to actually reference data from the SharePoint list item that triggered this workflow. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to look for my status column. And you can see here that when I type the word status, that the list of options in this menu is reduced. So I'm going to go ahead and select the task status value. And once I do that, you're going to see here that it dynamically piped in this block here. Now I will quickly flip back to my SharePoint list. Now in this example, our business process is that when a new task is assigned to an individual for the first time, it will automatically default to a status of backlog. So we're going to come back into Power Automate and here in our case block, 
you'll notice this field called equals, we are going to insert the word backlog. Now it's really important to note that the value that we're placing here has to match exactly what shows up in our status column. Otherwise, this workflow path will not execute. Now, another little tip to help you keep your workflows in Power Automate clean, when you're building out sort of these conditional paths, it is a good practice to rename these paths here. So if I click on the three dots, you'll see I have the option to rename this entire case block. And what I tend to do is I will just put a hyphen and say task assigned email notification. And that allows me to quickly understand that everything that is going to be encapsulated in this case block will pertain to the email notification. Now, the next step is to click on the add an action button. And what I'm going to do here is type send an email. And I am going to select this send an email V2 Office 365 Outlook. And this is going to add the send an email V2 card to this case block. Now, the first thing that I will do is click on add dynamic content again. And you'll see here that this brings up the dynamic content menu. Now, because I'm looking for email addresses, you'll see here that the list automatically filtered to show me only those SharePoint list item values that are emails. So you can see here, I have the task owner email. So I'll go ahead and select that. And you'll notice that it added it to the to field. And the next thing that I'm going to do is then place my cursor in the subject field. And here you can either just hard code in a subject line or you can hard code some piece of the subject line and then also pipe in additional information. Now you can see here that I've added the text task assigned colon. And what I'm going to do is I'm then going to pipe in the title. Now the title field in my SharePoint list was actually renamed to task name, but it did not update here. And so when we actually test this out, you'll see that this dynamic content is indeed going to pipe in the value that is the task name. And the next thing that we're going to do is then add the content that we would like to be included in the body of this email. Now I'll go ahead and add some text to this email. And you can see here that I've added in this text that reads, hello, you have been assigned a new task. The details of the task are as follows. And then I listed out a bunch of different fields followed by a colon. And I'm ending this email off with the text that reads, click here to view the task card details. Now, what I'm going to do is actually add additional information to this email from our dynamic content. So what I'm going to do here is say hello, and I'm going to select the task owner name. Now you'll see here when I type task owner, I have a bunch of different options and I will select task owner display name. And you'll notice again that the dynamic content shows up as these field cards. Next, I will add in the task name. And again, I will search for title as I renamed my title field to task name. Next, I'll add the start date to this email. Then I'll add our end date. Then I'll add my effort value. And I am also going to add a hyperlink that the recipient of this email can click on in order to be directed or navigated to the SharePoint list for the specific item that triggered this workflow. Now to do this, you want to search for link and you can see here this field that is called link to item. I'll go ahead and select this here. And what I'm going to do now is I will save our workflow. And you can see here that our flow is ready to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and test this by adding a new item to our SharePoint list. Now, before I go ahead and create a new item in order to test out the workflow, I did want to draw your attention to the two visual status columns that I have featured in my list. Now, the task status column is leveraging conditional formatting to display fields in a different manner, depending on which value is selected in that choice type column. 
and the percentage complete column is leveraging JSON formatting to display the percentage complete value as a dynamic bar chart. Now, if you are interested in learning how to implement conditional formatting or in how to implement the percentage complete bar chart, I do have two separate tutorials that will guide you through the process to implement both step by step. I've included the links to both of those tutorials in the description below. So you wanna make sure that you go ahead and check them out after you finish watching this video. All right, now I'll go ahead and click on the new item button. And here I will fill out my new item card. All right, now I've gone ahead and filled out my task card here. Now I do have one additional field to update and I'll go ahead and fill this out here. Now I do want you to notice that once I place a value here that is over 50, you are going to see that another field displays on the form. Now this is called SharePoint list form conditional formatting. Now, if you are interested in learning how to conditionally hide or show fields on a SharePoint new item form, again, I do have a tutorial walking you through step-by-step -step how to implement this. I've included a link to that video in the description below. And again, you wanna go ahead and check that out once you finish watching this video. All right, now I've input my last value here and I'll go ahead and click save. And we can see here that the task was added to the list. Now what I'll do is I will switch over to Microsoft Outlook. All right, now you can see here that our email did fire. And again, you can see the subject line task assigned and it piped in the name of the task that we just created. And if you look at the body of the email, you can see here, hello, and there is our dynamic value for the task owner. You can see here the task name was piped in, the start and the end date were also piped in and the effort value as well. And you can see here this hyperlink that was included in the body of the email. Now I did want to also draw your attention to an alternative method for adding email notification capabilities to a SharePoint online list. Now you'll notice here, I have this additional email here that I received at about the same time that our email notification fired. So I'll go ahead and click this. And you can see here that this is being sent from SharePoint online and it's being sent to me and it has also piped in the values of our SharePoint list item. Now this method is known as a SharePoint list alert. You can actually set SharePoint list alerts up directly from SharePoint. You do not have to use Microsoft Power Automate in order to get these kind of email notifications. I also have a tutorial outlining how you can configure SharePoint list and library alerts. And again, I've included a link to that tutorial in the description below. Next, we're gonna go ahead and build out our second email notification in Power Automate, and that is going to be sent to multiple recipients once a task has been completed. Now you can see here that I'm back in Power Automate. Now the next thing that I will do is add another case block to our workflow. Now to add an additional case block, what you want to do is place your cursor over the add case button, and you wanna go ahead and click on this. And you're gonna see here that this now adds an additional case block to our workflow. This time what we're going to do is we are going to build out our completed email notification. So I will type in completed in the equals box. Next, you want to click on add an action. And again, we are going to search for the send an email workflow action. I'll go ahead and select that here. And next I'll click into the to field and click on add dynamic content. And this time I'm going to add the task owner and I will also add the task contributor. Now, important note, if you are piping in multiple email addresses, then you wanna place a semicolon between those email variables. So you can see here that I have my task owner, semicolon, and then my task contributor. Next, I'll populate my subject field. You can see here I've added task completed and I've piped in the name of the task. And next I'll go ahead and build out the body of my email. Now you'll notice that for my task completed date, this time I am using the modified date, which will look at the 
date on which the item that is triggering this workflow instance was last modified. Next, I'll go ahead and click save. Now you can see here, I filled out my task card and I've set the status to completed. Now I'll go ahead and click save. And you can see here our email notification fired. You can see here that it was sent to the task owner and contributor. And you can see the additional information that was piped in the body of the email. So that's it. In this tutorial, I demonstrated how you can add email notifications to a SharePoint online list. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest tutorials that I publish. I'm Louis Ecobalas. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.